Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Different and welcome to Difference World YouTube channel. I hope you guys out there having a wonderful day like your girl. And if not, you better be manifesting, planning, and preparing for a better one because it's surely coming to you all for sure. If this is your first time to my YouTube channel, welcome you guys, happy to have you. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background about me, I'm an author, motivational speaker, and I'm a CEO for all my own business, a small business called Fair Eye Entertainment LLC. It's a business to strive to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which we educate, inspire, and entertain all at once. So again, if this is your first time to my YouTube channel, welcome, happy to have you. Before you leave, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can receive those notifications. So when I drop these content, you guys can come to Dippers World and you can come and learn. Uh, as you guys, if you're their second or third time back, welcome back. Happy to have you guys back as well. Everybody's welcome to Dippers World. Uh, today is Wednesday, and so uh, for Wednesday, we drop our podcast interviews. And so today is going to be a little bit of a mixture of it. It's going to be a little different, uh, being that it is Black History Month. Uh, for 2023, I want to um, share with you guys my interview I did at the historical HBCU in Houston, Texas, uh, other than Texas Southern University or TSU, home of the Tigers. Um, reached out to a young lady um, through email, it was a long shot. Never thought she would respond and give me a chance and the opportunity. I'm so glad that she did. Uh, Miss Michelle on air is what we call her here. And so big shout out to her and to uh, the 90.9 KTSU family out there for having me and allowing me to share my story and uh, promote my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, as well as advocating for mental health wellness and just uh, sharing my testimony with the world. Um, I did this interview a while back and um, it was a, a very good uh, accomplishment for me, man. It was a special uh, moment of memory that I have about this is when um, I did this back in uh, November 2021, and um, the interview debuted on the radio, and uh, I was listening to it uh, with my mother and her, just watching her smile at me and listening and grinning and uh, hearing what I had to say on the radio and just looking to see how proud she was of me. That was one of you know the happiest times of my life. Little did I know, you know, a month later, uh, she would be leaving me. And um, I look back on that time and just remembering, you know, even though it was an end of the day for my mom, I remember, you know, still being able to make her proud. And I know she's up above and you know, watching. I'm still proud of me, so I'm going to keep going in her honor and her name. So rest in peace to my mother, Rachel Shinnever. This one is for you and uh, for everybody else out there that's, you know, persevering through hard times and hardship, hard, hardships and that's going through any other type of mental anguish. Um, and especially, you know, with my people out there. I just dropped yesterday my social awareness and mental, uh, excuse me, advocating for mental health wellness in the community. And so, again, uh, everybody out there that's going through, you know, my hopes and prayers is with you and I'm with you in spirit. You know, keep going and keep persevering. And remember, this too shall pass. Uh, before I, you know, get off rails and keep talking, uh, let's get into it. Uh, check out my interview I had with my girl, Michelle, on air. Um, at the radio station here in Houston. Uh, this is my first time being on the radio, and I think I did pretty well, given I do talk very fast, and um, I date on a lot. But I think I did pretty good. I don't know, you guys tell me. Check it out, here it is. We wanna come back on, I'll let you guys know what's going on in Dickens World a little bit more. Yeah, here it is. The All New Vibe, Houston's Culture, Evolution of KTSU 90.9. Michelle McKnight here, and another Wednesday, which means that we are going to introduce you to a dope lady who is doing incredible things here in the Houston area, and it's Women Crushing It Wednesday, so cheers to that. We always appreciate uh, inviting new guests out, extending this platform to people that are uh, moving and shaking in the city, and also creating opportunities for other people as well as themselves, so welcome to the show, Different. Hey, Queen, thank you so much for having me. What's up, everybody out there listening? Yes, my name is Different, spelled D-I-F-E-R. I just wanted to go ahead and put that out there <laughs> for anybody out there guessing how you spell that. Yes, that's how you spell it. Different. <laughs> and different. And different is uh, creating something different. She is the CEO of Third Eye Entertainment here, and you are based out of Houston, Texas. And that's born and bred. Yes, ma'am. And so tell us a little bit about what this business is about. So Third Eye Entertainment LLC is a business that was started this year in March 2021. Um before I said that it came forth from the book that I've written that we're going to talk about later, but um, it happened when I went to my lawyer and spoke with her about it, and she asked the question, 
what's the name of your business? And I'm like, uh, I kept telling her name my book. <laughs> and she didn't understand it. And so she broke it down to me. It was like, well, you're going to have to have an LLC in order to, you know, sell this book. And so right there, I had to hit the ground running and <clears throat> asking God and talk with him, you know, and asking what should the name of my business be because now it's bigger than a book. It has to be more about how I'm going to get back to the public and, you know, what my business and brand is going to be about. And this is what I came up with, Third Eye Entertainment, LLC. The reason why I chose Third Eye because, for me, I'm, I like to be spiritually in tune. I won't say that I'm a religious person. I would say I'm a spiritual person. I love, you know, doing meditation, chakra healing. <laughs> as you can see, I got a little amethyst on me. Um, you know, and just, you know, reading about astral projection and, and aromatherapy and things like that. And so, for me, when I'm in tune with my third eye, my heart and my mind is in tune. And I'm able to achieve anything that, you know, I put my mind to. And so, that's what Third Eye Entertainment, the name comes up from it's spelled T H. 3-R-D-E-Y-E. Uh, -E. Um, and it's a business that strives to bring social awareness to society through our products and services in which it educates, inspires, and entertains all at once. Um, we talk about issues that are considered taboo and often swept under the rug or people like to turn a blind eye to, such as, you know, injustice, systemic racism. We often talk about, you know, issues such as domestic violence, suicide prevention, mental health awareness, and other issues as well and um, we also provide services I also do motivational speaking as well so that's the service side of it um, with the entertainment side before the pandemic I was an avid traveler we were saying earlier um, and so I decided to start my travel blog and my travel you know vlog on YouTube and so I have that for those who like to you know come into different world and <laughs> see what what's going on in my world that's was there uh, as far as our first product that we have to offer to the public is my new book what if a controversial paradigm shift uh, before I go any further Michelle I must <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put it out there you know this book does come with a disclaimer as you can see parental advisory um, it's intended for a mature audience it does contain you know sensitive content what if a controversial paradigm shift was a book written to inform and encourage thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America? I've done this through provocative and graphic illustrations that details on controversial deaths and events that have occurred in America within the African-American community. And the way that I've set it up was in four main paradigms. We have historical political precedent and then hypothetical and with in each of these paradigms i'm asking sub paradigm questions um for instance <clears throat> with the hypothetical excuse me historical paradigm i asked one of the questions what if in 1619 africans started dealing in illegal slave trading whereas they kidnapped millions of english men women and children and brought them on slave ships in america and then you'll see you know the provocative illustration of you know black slave ships um, excuse me, of, of white slaves and shackles and chains and being whipped and beaten by slave owners and you see illustrations like that throughout the book just basically asking the question you know what if if the shoe was on the other foot how would you feel? Mm -hmm. You know, what if this, what if that? And um, the book came about last year with me being stuck in the house and not being able to get out and about and having nothing to do and dealing with depression. Um, as we talked about it for, for, for me, mental health and with Third Eye Entertainment, uh, mental health and talking about suicide prevention is very important. And, and I know that you, you do a lot of work, and a lot of this work is surrounded by mental health awareness mm -hmm. um, in general, and that's where a lot of this has stemmed from. And uh, I know that you battled yourself with that, with yes. personal experience, especially last year going through the pandemic. So I do want to tap into that with you, oh, yeah. of course. Uh, we do have it different. <laughs> You're going to be here with me on our Four Women Crushing at one. We do have a special guest that is here with me in the studio tonight. She goes by the name of Different. She's so different. She even spells different, different, D-I-F-E-R-N-T. She is the CEO of Third Eye Entertainment. And we, of course, were just talking about what your company is based off of, um, really what it is that you stand
stand for in general, trying to help people um, that may be overwhelmed in certain situations. You do tap in on, on mental health and bring awareness to that, uh, which is something, you know, it's a really a big stigma, of course, in the African-American community specifically. And that's also something that you battled with. Um, here, you know, obviously, you know, in different chapters of your life, but especially 2020 with the pandemic. And I know that you said that that's one of the things that brought you into uh, writing this book. What if? And so I just want you to tell me a little bit about your personal testimony, what it is that you went through and how that brought you full circle into writing this book. Okay. Um, it may take a minute, but, but you'll get you to say hi, right? <laughs> okay. Well, to, to, to tell you that, I have to take you back to 1990. <laughs> no, no, not that far. But um, I guess you could say for me, my story started around the time I was around the age of 11. Um, me and my family, we ended up homeless on the street for, you know, the next three years of my life. And we basically lived pillow to post. And at the age of 14, I was secretly placed in foster care by a relative. And for the first six months of being in CPS and nobody knowing where I was, I tried my hardest to come home. Um, however, I found out from another foster kid that if you stayed in, you know, care and you aged out or you were adopted by a certain age, then the state of Texas would pay for your tuition fee when you went to college. So right then and there, you know, a light bulb went out of my head and I just decided to use my street smarts to elevate my book smarts. And so by the time my family found me, I just told them I was going to stay and do God those four years. And that's what I did. And I ended up, you know, graduating from Elsick High School, you know, shout out to the SWAT. Um, <laughs> And ended up going to Sam Houston State University, so shout out to the Bearcats. And um, ended up, like I said, we got, studied, we got the opportunity to study abroad and um, went to Kim Young University in South Korea. And then within that opportunity, I got a chance to travel to eight other countries, as well as I started my own student organization there titled Pay It Forward, an organization that was tailored to volunteering, mentoring, and educating you know, kids that were in foster care. That's also where, you know, my motivational speaking book was born. I would go to different high schools, talking with them about the importance of education and sharing my story with them. And so by the time I graduated from Sam Houston, you know, I have my degree in international business. I got two minors in economics and business come. Uh, a couple of years later, I get my master's in entrepreneurship. I'm also a Texas real estate agent, and, you know, now I'm a CEO and an author. But all that, you know, those accomplishments and notches under my belt doesn't mean a thing, you know, if I wasn't happy on the inside, which is very true. Um, for me, um, I had a, a very bad habit in the characteristics of, you know, sabotaging every good thing that came to me. Coming up in that environment, for me, with chaos, you know, it seemed normal. So when I got taken out of that situation and was placed in foster care, I was actually placed in good homes and good school districts. But for me, it was just too good to be true. And I just thought, you know, hey, all good things come to an end. So why not be the captain of your own ship and decide when the time to sink it? And so that's just what I would do. I would sabotage, you know, every relationship that came my way, people that came into my life, I would push them out. And it was like that for me all throughout high school, college, and even as an adult. And into where I was, you know, squandering all the opportunities I had coming for me career-wise. And there was one opportunity that I had uh, a meeting with somebody who was well-connected, you know, just knew a lot of people. Basically, you know, could have took me from the back to the front. However, I was dealing with those demons in the back of my head telling me, oh, you're not good enough, you know, they don't like you like that, or they just taking, you know, pity out of you because, you know, what you've been through, what you two country, you two together, those, those demons, you know, you know, we all face them. And... It was that, you know, that it let it get in my head and I purposely showed a blatant to that meeting and it left a sour taste in that person's mouth and to this day forward, I regret that. And for years, I had sat on that and other mistakes that I had made, but it wasn't until, you know, I had to face the ugly truth within myself that, you know, it was on me. I needed to go and fix my issues. Whatever I went through as a child, it was not my fault. It was out of my control. But as an adult, it's on me to go and fix it. And at what point did you pivot? So that's the point that I pivot. I just said, bump that. I'm, I'm going to dismiss that notion that, you know, they say black people don't do therapy. And this black girl right here is going to go through some therapy. I'm going to go fix my issues. I'm going to get it together. That moment where it like that sometimes. You ain't lying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that's what happened for me. So for two years now, I've been you know, 
feel like I had to get serious about it. I wasn't serious about it at first, but once I did for two years consistently now, I've been in therapy, and I'm proud to say that, and I say this to anybody out there listening, it is okay to not be okay, but just don't sit there and not be okay. If you're going through any type of mental anguish, feeling depressed, having anxiety attacks, feeling suicidal, or going through any type of bullying, go get help. Go talk to somebody, a therapist, a family member, a friend. Go pick up a hobby. Go get rid of those people, you know, who mean you no know well in life. And go mend those broken bridges that you feel that you should mend. And, and, and that's how you free yourself from that bondage. That's what I was able to do. And so talking with my therapist about my issues and just being upfront about it in real and up my self-sabotaging ways, this is what came of it, you know, he helped me turn a negative into a positive, he told me to get back into my writing, into, you know, my journey, I love writing manifestation things yeah. and affirmations and stuff, and so he, he encouraged me to get back into that, and that's and what has brought this is what has brought me, yeah, so, okay. yeah, yeah. Fast, fast forward to, um, <laughs> in May 25th, 2020 happens, the day that George Floyd dies, that's also, that hit me as well, I actually, you know, grew up in third world as well, I spent my fourth and fifth grade here, I went to Dyson Elementary, <laughs> uh, but I'm from Fifth Ward, and so when his death, you know, happened, of course I wanted to get involved and come here in March and have my voice heard, but I felt I wanted my voice to be heard long after the protest is over and done with. I want my voice to be heard long after I'm gone, and so talking with God and asking God, you know, what can I do to have my voice be heard in a way that's going to make people think, catch their attention, and as well as, you know, put me on the map. I prayed a long time ago, you know, to God to allow me to be the one in my family to break that generational curse and create generational wealth. And this is, it, it all coming to a head now. It's coming to manifestation. It's time. It's now and never. You know, as I was telling you, with, you know, during this pandemic, it's taught us, you know, life is not promised and nothing's guaranteed. And so for anybody out there that's feeling it's their time to go after whatever it is that they're feeling is destined for, now or never. It's time to get rich doing that pandemic or die trying um and that's, also, what, uh, yeah. that's what different of course and her organization uh, yep. third eye entertainment is here to of course help people with yep. um and overcoming that so if you are battling something and uh, you are looking to actually firsthand take uh, take things to another level and you want to be able to mend certain things even if it is within yourself of course i'll talk to different about that next how you can get in contact with her how you can take advantage of these services and also how you can get your hands on this book what if so make sure to keep those radios turned on and stay here on the show it's women crushing it wednesday we always have some superb phenomenal women who are working hard every day to be not only a blessing to themselves but a blessing to other people and that is the mission that different is on every day and yes that is her name different she spells the different other than different as well she is the ceo of third eye entertainment and of course we've just been talking about her own battles and overcoming depression and just the really the psychological tricks that are minds play on us every day keeping us from really reaching our full potential and a lot of times it just has to do with us doubting ourselves um and so defeating that and overcoming that obstacle in itself um you know will open up several other doors for you and thankfully that is something that has brought things into full circle here um and we also are talking about the book that it is that you have published where in this book she basically takes the narrative of what is and turns it into what if. And with this book, what are you ultimately hoping to achieve with a different? So not only am I hoping to push the envelope for those to have the conversation about, you know, systemic racism in America, it's, it's my hope and prayer that it's, it's, I will say this, let me just, just put this out there. I'm aware that change does not happen overnight, and it does not happen with just one person. But what if, what if this is the generation, Michelle, that plans to see for the next? And so that's basically what this book is, is about, just, you know, an attempt. You know, I'm not saying that it is, although I am manifesting that this is a book that rings the world's bell and, and make people think and over time create systemic change because quite frankly I'm tired of talking about systemic racism I'm ready to talk about systemic change and so it is my theory that when we have these conversations and being open minded and, and respectful about each other's opinions and, and, and take accountability and acknowledgement about what's going on around us we can't do nothing about the past it happened we, we, we have to keep moving forward but let's focus on the now what's going on now and be more aware of it and so once we do that, 
And that's why I feel that's where we can find common ground. And then for that's where systemic change can take place. And so also I want to say that this book is not just about putting it in the white person's face so you don't make white people mad. It, it will do that without a doubt. But it's more than that. If, if those who are mature enough to you know, buy the book and pick it up and read through the entire book and make it to hypothetical paradigm shift, that they will see that I'm not just talking about systemic racism in itself and how, they, how white people treated black folks. I'm talking about unity and compassion and coming together after it's all said and done. Not just with blacks and whites. For those who buy the book and, and look at the illustrations, the devil is in the detail. You will see that you know, I pay homage to even Native Americans, you know, Muslims, Asians, even the LGBTQ community, you know, they're included in this book as well. And so those who, I often say this is my hashtag that I like to use, read the book and then pass judgment. People are going to talk about you, whether it be good or bad, but at least before you pass the judgment, read the book. And so that, that's one thing I learned from number 45, you know, <laughs> you go where you celebrate it, not where you tolerate it. And so, you know, I'm well aware that not everybody's going to like what I'm saying, but I'm going to go to the people that I know that's going to feel me. And I can, I, that's why I'm here, you know, with the Tigers, you know, represent with me, because I know you guys feel where I'm coming from. And so, and different, she thinks different, she operates different, and she's <laughs> giving you different. So with this book, where is this available? For yeah, people? so okay. anybody out there, you know, who wants to buy the book, I would appreciate anybody's support. Go to differenceworld.com, spell again, D-I-F-E-R-N-T. S W O R L D dot net. Uh, I also do motivational speaking, so you can go there and book me for anybody out there that's listening and would like to have me on their show or uh, participate in any type of grassroots conversations. I'm free of charge as of now. <laughs> uh, so you can go again to my website and check out all my uh, other things I have going on for me with uh, my other social media handles on YouTube. Twitter, Instagram, you can find it all there at differenceworld.net, especially my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, and again, please be advised that this is a grown folks only type of book, so if you can't take this type of heat, then do not bother coming to this kitchen, I'm not worried about anybody who, who doesn't want to buy the book, the people that want to, they will, and so that's just what it is when you manifest, plan, and prepare the right Absolutely. things, and people will come to you. Hey, go where you are celebrating, not where you are tolerating, so you of course appreciate you and uh, as always you know we don't just tolerate women we celebrate women here thank every you Wednesday. queen for having me i must say that i cannot end this segment without saying that thank you for having me and let me remind you that you are queen and you have a crown on your head and you are rocking it oh so well thank you child. thank you for I'm everybody i for having me bit, yeah me too well, i just had to get mine so you, did. So you see how i'm flipping it now <laughs> yeah we both locked up so um but, but thank you so much for having me thank you for everybody out there listening to me again for anybody out there i can't stress this enough that, are, that is going through any type of mental anguish, please know that it's okay to not be okay, but just don't sit there and not be okay. Whatever you went through in your past, it may or may not have been your fault or not in your control, but it is your problem to deal with and you have to fix it. For those who know that they have a problem and don't want to fix it, it is your fault then. So just understand that and once you face the ugly truth about that and about yourself, then you're able to free yourself from that mental bondage. Anybody out there feeling suicidal, please know that that is not the way. If you need to, call 1-800-273-8255. Uh, or if anybody needs to look up online, check out mentalhealthishealth.org. Uh, please know that even though I don't know you, you matter to me, and I care about you, and we need you here, especially in the black community. You know, it's very important to talk about these issues. And anybody out there listening, I want y'all to look at my life as an example of how God can take you from the back and put you to the front when you just believe in yourself and you believe in him. I'm not trying to get religious or anything on anybody, but look at my life and, you know, where I've been through, where I've come through, and where I'm at now and where I'm going. And you can do the same. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to my audio interview I did with KTSU 90.9 FM uh, radio station here in Houston. Uh, this was done uh, on TSU campus, uh, HBCU here in Houston. Um, I was very happy and, and proud and honored to, for it being my first radio interview, to have it done at a historical black college such as, you know, uh, TSU. And so, again, big shout out to Michelle on air. You guys, be sure to check them out. I dropped their link below in the description area. Check out their um, website and show them some love as well. 
Uh, definitely, you guys. Uh, if you guys enjoy listening to the interview, be sure by showing me by hitting that like and the sharing and comment, and definitely subscribing to my YouTube channel. I uh, truly appreciate all the love and support that I am getting. Uh, keep it coming, and I'm gonna keep going, you guys. So I love it. Um, moving on, what else we got going on in the this world coming up? Keeping a gravy train rolling. Tomorrow is Thursday, and so I'll be dropping maybe like a movie review. I don't know. I have to figure it out. But something I'll be doing for you guys for the culture. Uh, so be on the lookout. Again, that's why you gotta you know hit that subscribe button and uh, make sure you have that notification uh, button clicked. And so when I drop these content, you guys come on to Dippin' Swell and you come and learn, yeah? Also, don't forget, you guys go to my website, dippin'swell.net, and look up all my other social media handles, including my Facebook, Instagram, and my Twitter. Uh, on TikTok now, as I'm, I'm getting the hang of it and start, about to start dropping these videos, you know, TikTok. TikTok. So be sure to follow your girl there. Uh, as well as, uh, don't forget, I'm available if anybody needs to look me for any type of motivational speaking event or grassroots conversations you'd like for me to be a part of. You can definitely book me again at my website, differenceworld.net. And uh, I, I'm a free charge as of now, but I've got a feeling that's all about the change. You know, like I said, God can take you from the back to the front just like that. And so uh, that's why you have to keep going and keep manifesting, planning, and preparing for it. I would also, don't forget my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift, is also available on my website. Again, differenceworld.net. Can't say it enough. You know, I got to scroll in at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to promote it until I can't know more. Differenceworld.net is where you can get the book. Again, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift is a book that's written to encourage and inform thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systemic racism in America. And I've done this through graphic and provocative illustrations. So again, be advised that this is sensitive content and it's intended for mature audience only. So if you can't take this type of heat, still come on in the kitchen. That's why I want you guys to uh, see you know, what it is from the other side and have these conversations that need to be had, even if it's uncomfortable, even if you know it goes nowhere. Nothing beats a failure but a try. And so again, uh, as well as it's a great time, you know, being in Black History Month, uh, why not tell our story in, from a different perspective? And so again, go to my website, differenceworld.net, and get your copy of my book, What If a Controversial Paradigm Shift. Yep. Thank you. All right, you guys. Uh, with that being said, moving right along. Hello, what else we got on the agenda? Dun, 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 dun. Mental health check time. I know I got my little uh, cloud and uh, sun. Uh, bubble popping up over me and so usually it signifies an attempt time and so with that being said you guys any again say it, I can't say it anymore anybody out there that's going through any type of mental health anguish I don't give a damn if you're black white purple yellow I don't care you know alien whatever and if you're going through any type of stress being you know depression feeling you know suicidal having anxiety attacks you know uh, being bullied at school, anything that causes you any type of mental stress or anguish and, and that's, you know, causing you turmoil into your emotional and mental state of mind, get help with it. You know, don't sit there and just let that, you know, fester on you and manifest this as something that, you know, you can't turn back from. You are the captain of your own ship. You decide where to steer and where to navigate it. And with that being said, always remember that it's okay to not be okay, but never, ever, ever sit there and not be okay. Like I said, go get help in any way that you can, be it talking with a therapist, family member, a friend, uh, picking up a hobby, mending broken bridges, cutting people off, physical health, mental health, even, you know, sexually, you know, you got a lot of sexual aggression picked up or you need to keep it on lockdown. Do whatever you need to do, you know, sexually healthy to get yourself, you know, healthy. Uh, do it. And, and just don't sit there and, and not be okay. And so again, with anybody, even if it's you or if you know anybody that needs these mental health resources, please feel free to share it with them. The crisis hotline number is 1-800-273-8255, or you can call or text 988, or if you would prefer to text 741-741, or go online to mentalhealthishealth.us or 988lifeline.org. And for those that are outside of the U.S., you can check out encounseling.com. Again, it's E-N-C-O-U-N-S-E-L-I-N-G.com. 
And again, remember that it's okay to not be okay, but never sit there and not be okay. As well as be sure to do your own homework and again, find what works best for you. Because you're the captain of your own ship and you decide where to navigate it. And then again, remember, it's, you are not alone. And if whatever you're going through, this too shall pass. You should get through it, okay? So with that being said, I want to end this on a positive note. And just reminding everybody out there that's part of the culture, man, just celebrate, you know, who we are, where we come from, and where we're going, to be proud of our black skin, our dark skin, and to stand up and to remember your name and remember where you're coming from. I, I, next uh, week, I got a special topic I want to talk about in regards to, you know, our names and remember where we come from. But that's why you got to hit that subscribe button and, and the notification uh, button. So when I drop these contents, you come into different world and you're coming on, yeah? And so with that being said, you guys, remember, whatever it is in life that you believe you're destined for, you have to manifest, plan, and prepare for it, and then it will surely come to you. Dip as well. Come and learn. Peace. What if? What if in 1619, Africans started dealing in slaves trading? The tables were turned around. What if they kidnapped millions of Englishmen, women, and children from their homeland and brought them to America on a slave ship? What if a controversial paradigm shift is a book written to inform and encourage consistent, thought-provoking conversations about injustice and systematic racism in America through graphic but provocative illustration? What if provides a different perspective by detailing controversial deaths and events as four categorized paradigm shifts, historical, political, precedent, and hypothetical? What if? A controversial paradigm shift by author Different. Go to differenceworld.net.